New Hope Outreach Ministries, making a difference by taking the gospel from word to action. And now, today's message. Well, God always got some good stuff for us, amen? Amen, praise God. Thank God for being able to celebrate Mother's Day last week, and, and hopefully that all you mothers had a, a great day by the grace of God, and family serve you well. Amen. You know, we, we're fighting many battles in life, amen, and many of the battles we fight in life, is, uh, all of them can be won. Look at your neighbors, all of them can be won. You know, you got to look at yourself not being a loser, Amen. Because you have that loser and uh, loser mentality, um, that's the way you approach life. That's the way you're gonna do things. That's the way you're gonna see things as a loser. And and when and especially those of us that are saved, you're not a loser. You're a winner. If you've never been on the winning side, you're on the winning side when you give your life to Jesus. Really. Now, only thing at this point, you have to learn how to become a winner, so you can be able to be successful by the grace of God. And what we want to learn how to do is to fight life battles successfully. Fight in life battles successfully. I don't know about you, but their life is full of battles. Amen. And, and I'm telling you that uh, if, if you're not fighting one now, get yourself prepared. It's just not a matter of how, it's just a matter of when. You can be fighting one. But whenever they comes up, by the grace of God, you can win. You only win a sign by the grace of God. And we're going to share some things with you today, how to win battles and how to be able to become more successful in winning those battles. Because we deal with a God. God is omniscient. Um, and one thing about him, that uh, when it comes to God, uh, he knows everything. There's nothing God don't know. You can't come up with a problem, come up with a situation that's too hard or is overwhelming that surprises them. Many things surprise us, but it never surprised God by the grace of God. But not only, but not, not only he's omniscient, but also he's omnipresent, and he's omnipotent, and he's all-powerful. He's in every place, and there's nothing too hard that God can't do for you by the grace of God. So this morning, you got your, um, got your Bibles uh, with you this morning. Turn to the book of um, Ephesians. We're going to start off in Ephesians, um, chapter 1 and verse 17. Then we're going to go back to Isaiah 46.10. Just want to lay some groundwork for you this morning. And we want to speak to you this morning about what you need to fight life battles. What do you need to fight just like if you're going into a kitchen to cook, depends on what you're going to cook and what you're going to prepare will determine what you need to have in the kitchen. Is that right? And so if you're going to do some mechanical work, it's important to make sure you have the right tools. Or if you don't have the right tools, it's going to be hard for you to remove and replace certain things not having the right tools. Can't use a screwdriver and a hammer for everything. It's good to have it, but it has its place, but you can't use a screwdriver to take off nuts. Amen? And you can't, and so therefore, and, and when, when you look at a lot of things that you deal with in the natural, it also applies in the, in the spiritual realm as well, too. People try to separate the apples from apples, but whatever. But if you look at a lot of things we do in the natural, it applies to the spiritual. Say, for instance, like a good example, like 401k. Most people now have what we call a 401k um, because of retirement. Now, if you don't invest anything into that when you start working, and if you work that job for 20 or 30 years, you're not going to have a whole lot in retirement when you retire. Is that right? Now, look at that in the spiritual. If you don't apply yourself in the spirit realm, don't try to apply yourself, do anything for God, or make no investment in the kingdom of God or whatever. Well, 
the day when you come, when you stand into eternity, guess what? You don't have no investment because you haven't, you haven't applied yourself. So that's why a lot of things in the natural also apply in the spiritual realm as well, too. So that's why we got an opportunity now as, as Christians, as believers, is to not only just, it's about us, but what are we doing for the kingdom of God right now? How are we applying our gifts and talents, our time and effort? We're doing a lot in the natural, but what are we doing in the supernatural for God, by the grace of God? In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 17, it says this, I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation that gives you a deeper and personal intimate insight into the true knowledge of him, for we know the Father through the Son. Now, Paul here is praying for the church to have something that he thought was important to them. And what he is praying for them for, that they have a deeper revelation of God's word. And this is what we need. We need supernatural revelation. Amen? Not just revelation, but supernatural revelation. And when you get supernatural revelation by the, go, by, by the grace of God, that comes through the Holy Spirit. People say, well, I don't need to do this. I don't need to serve God and all that. But there are certain things you need in order to be successful. If you want to fight life battle, if you want to be successful in life, you need supernatural revelation about certain things. Because you're going to come in contact with things, certain things that your horoscope can't help you. Hello? Hello? The psychic can't help you. You're not going to be able to deal with it. You're not going to be able to overcome it unless you got some supernatural wisdom and by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God. And, and the Holy Spirit speaks to us. There's an inward knowing. There's an inward knowing that you know how, that by the situation, that you have no idea what you need to do and how you need to do that situation or whatever. But the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what you need to do and how you need to, to apply yourself to be successful. If we listen to the Holy Spirit, what he tells us to do, it's going to help us to be able to be successful in everything that you do by the grace of God, especially when it comes to spiritual warfare. Because many times people are trying to fight battles with families and situations, jobs and whatever, even in their own personal life. They're trying to fight it in their own strength. I got news for you. You can't do it in your own strength. If you could do it in your own strength, what would, the, what would be the purpose of having Jesus in your life? What would be the purpose of having the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you in your life? What would the purpose of Jesus dying on the cross for you, if that's the case? If you could save yourself, if you don't need God, if you don't want anything to do with God or whatever, then if everybody's going to go to heaven or whatever, then what was the purpose of Jesus dying on the cross for our sin? Then that means that God will have to apologize to Jesus for what he did. And we know for a fact that that's not, not, uh, not going to happen because when God sent Jesus, he died for a reason. And see, and having the revelation knowledge guarantees you success in the outcome of every situation you're going to deal with by the grace of God. And it's more to it than just, just knowing something. This is just, just being saved, whatever. You got access to being saved that you will not that you don't have access not being saved by having having wisdom and revelation knowledge about certain things that are going to take place by the grace of God. And the, and the key to successful to living a successful life is having revelation knowledge about certain things or whatever. Uh, and, and listen to me, even small things, jobs and and dating or whatever it may be. You need supernatural revelation because we live in a, lie, uh, live in a life of uh, society today that people will lie to you. If you don't think that we'll keep living, keep coming in contact with them. People will tell you everything they want you to know and everything you want to hear for not necessarily telling you the truth. And that's why we need supernatural revelation and knowledge to be able to sort through all this smoke that people are putting in front of us. So that way we will not be taken advantage of or whatever. And when we do this by the grace of God, it's going to help us, whatever. So 
And that's what it's more than just just having a mental understanding. A lot of people are smart. Some people are born naturally to be smart. Just naturally smart. I remember uh, growing up, you know, over the years when my youngest daughter, Andrea, Andrea could look at TV. She could listen to music. She can do all this stuff and still can be working math and working a problem, go to school and become a, and still a student. Now, all of us, many of us can't do all those things simultaneously, okay? But she had a photograph of when it comes to numbers and stuff. She just knew how to do numbers. She could figure out numbers or whatever. I guess that's why she ended up becoming an architect or whatever. But, uh, but I'm telling you, some people are supernaturally smart. But even with all that intelligence, it still does not supersede wisdom and knowledge and revelation that God gives you by the grace of God. And when... And this is one of the greatest causes of failures in our society in a Christian life when they don't have revelation knowledge from God. Don't seek God for revelation knowledge about certain situations. And, and, most, and, and most Christians believe that they can, they can live without God to the point where they don't have to have this individual knowledge, but they need it to be successful. And when you look at, look at the book of Psalm, um, I'm still going to Psalm. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 46 and verse 10. Isaiah 46, 10 said, God knows the ending before the beginning. If God is just as smart and knows about all those things or whatever, why are we not tapping into that resource that he made available to us? Why are we not asking God for more understanding and wisdom when we get ready to make a decision. See, the devil wants us to do whatever we can to get away from it. He wants us to live independently of God. That's his main objective is to keep us not dependent upon God for whatever we do. And when we do that, we're setting ourselves up for sabotage, really. We're sabotaging ourselves when we do that. And when we begin to depend upon God, God can lead us and guide us into all truth. That's why the scripture said in the book of um, Isaiah 4, 6, 10, that he said, I make known the ending, the end from the, from the beginning. He knows the end. He knows the outcome of everything. He knows everything we're going to do. Well, if that's the case, then Pastor John, why don't we do it? We got a choice in the matter. We got a free will. And with that free will, that's what gets us in trouble because we live in society, the things that surround us, we're influenced by what we see, what we hear, and the people we come in contact with. They influence our lives. And many times those, those types of influences can also influence us in such a way that, that prevents us from listening to God, what God wants to do. God wants every person to be saved. But that's not, that's not going to happen because that's not the individual choice. They have their own life. They want to make their own decision. That's entirely up to them. But God desired that all men would be saved. But again, like I said, that's not, that's, that's, that's not going to happen because people are not, don't want that by the grace of God. Most people believe the word of God with their mind. They believe the word. They believe the word. They know the word. But at the same time, it's not really doing them any good because for a simple fact, it's not helping them. They're not getting the benefit from their word like they should because they're not using the wisdom of God to apply themselves or whatever. Even when it comes to buying a house or buying a car or whatever, and especially the way things are now. Brothers and sisters, we're moving on time now. We need God's wisdom. We need revelation because for a simple fact, you know, all the stuff that's going on in the world today, things are changing right in front of our very eyes and whatever. Even the job situation I begin to change because you notice a new term on the block now. They call it um, AI, or artificial intelligence now. It's going to eventually, unfortunately, it's going to take a lot of jobs or whatever. But see, and the thing about it, see, the Holy Spirit could be telling you right now you need to start looking at something else. But because we're so stubborn and because we're so, um, so confined to what we're doing, so used to what we're doing, we don't think that nothing's going to change. It's going to stay the same. But I'm telling you, things are changing every day, right in front of your very eyes or whatever. 
And that's why you need wisdom in the, in the revelation knowledge to be able to figure out what's going on so you can make some good decisions. Just like right now, it's talking about car, buying a car. A lot of people are buying a car. This is not time to buy a car. The interest is too rate. The, the prices are too high. All that stuff. And you, you'll get what you want. Don't get me wrong. You can get what you want, but you can end up paying too much for it right now. But if you just go ahead and just go by instinct based upon your funds that you have and whatever, you can afford it, that's great. But it's the timing is right. That's what we need to look at. It's the timing is right. If the time is not right, it can be good to you, but necessarily good. You can end up paying a whole lot more for it than what you should. Same thing with the house. And right now, the way the housing market is right now, people are not buying houses like they used to. Most of the younger generation don't want to live in the house because it's too much responsibility. So what people are doing now, more people are living in apartments now, townhouses, than they did years ago. And, you say, and that's why it's important for us to have revelation knowledge. What is going to be good for us? What God will have for me versus what, what he's doing for them? Because everything that everybody else is doing, you don't want to get caught up in that everybody else is doing it. You want to learn how to listen to what God is telling you what you need to do to be successful by the grace of God. And God is, he wants to explain, he wants to show you things because he knows all about you. And just like Daphne said a minute ago, that's one, um, Psalms 139 and verse 1 through 4 in the Living Bible. And so, Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I, when I sit or stand, when I'm far away, you know every thought. You chart the path ahead of me and tell me where to stop and to rest. Every moment, you know where I am. And then he said, and you know what I'm going to say before I even say it. Now, this is, that's why it's so important is to consult, learn how to consult God right now. Be able to make your wise decision. Because well, just like years ago, you know, a few years ago when the pandemic was taking place, there was a lot of decisions being made everywhere, people making decisions. Someone was good and someone was not good. But people were making decisions or whatever. And because they made decisions or whatever, and some of them could have been, the outcome been a whole lot different. Just like some people say, well, guess what? Um, I believe that God can heal me. I'm not going to go to the doctor. That may be good and that may be bad. Depends on the, the wisdom of God or whatever. God can work through the doctor just like he can work through other sources. If you don't have the faith to trust God, then you may need to consider going to a doctor or whatever. That don't mean they're bad people. That's why God got them here because he knows for a fact we're going to need them. But the point what's going to be good for you, it may not be good for them. You may have the faith to trust God for your healing. But don't say that you know you can trust God for your healing and don't trust God for your healing. That's going to be disastrous. You can end up stepping to eternity. And that's what happened to a lot of people. They said, well, I'm going to trust God. Like I know one, one situation, Vincent, it's one lady, she had an opportunity to go to, um, to get some treatment from the doctor, and she refused to do it because she said that she believed that God was going to heal her. That's what she believed. But the question becomes today, did she really trust God? Did she get revelation knowledge about that? Did she have wisdom about that? Evidently not, because for, for several, several months later, she ended up passing away. See, God don't fail. Listen to me. God don't fail. If God tells you something, it's going to happen. It's just not a matter of how, it's just a matter of when. It's going to happen. No if, no ands, no buts about it. It will happen. If God told you to do it, it's going to happen. And you don't have to make no excuses for it if it don't happen. It's going to happen, I'm telling you. You can get ready for it. It's going to take place by the grace of God. And that's why it's important to have this revelation knowledge when it comes to making a decision. And coming and when it comes to knowing God for yourself or whatever. It's good for other people to know him. It's good for other people to tell you things about him, what he has done for them. But the point of it is, that's great. But what you want to be able to understand what God has done for you. How God has revealed himself to you as a person. Go to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18 to 20. Remember there, there was many of the disciples there. There was quite a few of the disciples, 12 of them, matter of fact. And so by the grace of God, here's Peter. 
And Jesus asked Peter, asked Peter a question. Who do men say that I am? That was a question. And that's a good question that, that people are saying. People are, whoever you believe in, what you believe about, about Jesus, that's what's going to, uh, that's going to come out of your life. That, that's going to radiate out of your life by the grace of God. That's going to manifest out of your life, whatever you believe about God. And Peter said in the, in the new translation here, said that, um, Philip, new translation says, that, Peter, the son of Jonah, said, you are a fortunate man indeed, said Jesus, for it was not your own nature, but my heavenly father who revealed this truth to you. And Peter told Jesus thou art, that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. That was something that Peter could not figure out himself. That was revelation knowledge that he has about Christ. Once you get that revelation knowledge of who Jesus is and, and what he is, what he's all about, it changes you, your perspective about how you approach life, how you see life, how life is, how you approach life or whatever. And when you don't have a good understanding of really who Jesus is, have that revelation knowledge of who he is or whatever, you're going to find yourself vacillating all over the place, whatever, when you don't have to be. That's why if you don't know something, just ask God, just like when you lose something in your house. You say, look, I have no idea where it's at. I don't know. I know it's here someplace. But Holy Spirit, show me where it's at. How many times have we lost things and couldn't find it? Then all of a sudden, we ask the Holy Spirit to show us to it. Then it's a matter of minutes, maybe a day or so later, whatever. But the bottom line is this. You end up finding it, okay, because you ask. And that's why it's good to be able to ask God and acquire God about a certain situation or whatever. And when you do that, that's, why, that's how you win your battles. That's how you become successful. When you approach God about the things that you're concerned about, and get his wisdom and his direction, you're always going to be successful. And many times, God will tell people what to do because that's not what they want to do. They won't do it. So if it fails, then guess what? Who to blame? It's not God to blame. We don't want to blame because we failed not to do what God told us to do. Just like when God told Naaman, to go down to the, to the Jordan River and, and, and be baptized seven times to get rid of leprosy. He had a choice to make. Either do it or not do it. Then he went down and baptized four times. Would that solidify what God told him to do? No. God told him seven times. And he was concerned about, of all the rivers there was, there was during that particular time, why you want me to go and baptize in this nasty river? Knowing that I got leprosy. That's why God comes in. He has taken the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. If God tell you to do it, if you do it, it's going to what? Work. Every time. Every time. If it does not work, then, then you, some, somebody missed it and it won't God. But that's why it's important is to listen to God. And he's always going to tell you what to do. What to, even right now with all this stuff, with all this shooting and stuff going on in America, whatever. It's important to really to know where to go, when to go. You don't get no text message saying, you know, it's going to be a shooting over here today. You have no idea. But guess what? The Holy Spirit knows. He knows where you need to be. And many times our delay can be a blessing many times. And he can keep us out of if we look. And that's why it's important to learn how to listen now. So when the heat is on, you're not going to be vacillating all the place trying to decide what you, what you should and should not do. Because you've gotten so used to listening to the voice of God. You know the voice of God. And when he tells you something, you're going to do it by the grace of God. You're not going to. The Bible said, my sheep knows my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. You're not going to be. Send up about to, about to cut your vein because you don't know what to do. Word and blood pressure all pegging out because you're concerned about 
the situation or whatever, trying to figure out what you need to do. You're going to know what you need to do. And when you do, you're going to have peace about it. I'm telling you. You're going to have peace. You're not going to be frustrated and worried and whatever, because worrying is not going to change one thing. Not going to change one thing. But I'm telling you, if you trust God, will. If you trust God, will. In the book of First Chronicles, chapter 12 and verse 32, it talked about the, um, the sons of Ezekiel. The sons of Ezekiel were men of war. In First Chronicles, chapter 12 and verse 32, he said, And the Ezekiel men who had what? Understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. To the chiefs or whatever. And the word understanding means they had revelation and spiritual knowledge. Revelation, the word understanding means they had revelation and spiritual knowledge of what to do. Revelation and spiritual knowledge by the grace of God. And not only that, but also the word time in this particular scripture talks about they understood the strategy and the opportunity. Because remember the Bible said we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we're fighting against the wiles, the strategies of the enemy. The strategies out there. Because he's laying plots for us every day. And that's why it's important for us as believers is to be prepared for, to prevent ourselves from walking into those plots or whatever. It may be good to you, but not necessarily good for you. But the Holy Spirit will let you know what you need to do. Just like last week, I was uh, I had some, some blood work done or whatever. And, and Saturday night, I had a dream about this blood work before it even happened. God gave it to me in a dream. And God will do that. If you are open to God, God will, re- will reveal himself to you. He will show you things if you get used to depending upon him. That's why it's important as a church, as a believer, to learn how to always depend upon God. And he will talk to you about any situation that you're dealing with. He'll show you. That's why he tells us not to worry. Well, why, why didn't he want us to worry? Because there's nothing to worry about when you can trust him. And that's why it's important, really, to be able to understand not only the have the spiritual revelation knowledge, but also you need to understand the strategy and the opportunity you have. I remember a few years ago um, when the pandemic was going on, whatever, and God has, um, I was thinking about my old truck or whatever. During that time, people being laid off and doing all types of things. And so the Holy Spirit told me, go buy a truck. If that's the devil, it's the Holy Spirit. I mean, it, people are getting laid off now. You got to understand. This was during the heart of the pandemic. But again, if God tell you to do it, what you need to do? You need to argue with him? That's when you need to have the faith and trust in him to do what he said do. Because the blessing of the Lord make it rich and adds what? He has no sorrow with it. And that's why it's important to know God and when you're moving and making decisions about certain things and you, won't, and you never miss it. You never miss it by the grace of God. But see, most people always like to wait until everything is perfect. Everything got to be dressed, as we say in the military, dress right, dress, and left, right, left. Everything got to be hunky door. Then that gives us the impression that God has endorsed it now of everything fine with us. And that could be a, a sure setup from the enemy if you, if you, if you take that bait without consulting God about it. And that's why it's important to be able to, to deal with it. And these men of Essachar, these were men of war. But they knew, they knew they had knowledge and they knew the strategy and they knew how, when it came to opportunity, they knew the timing, when to launch, when, how to launch, and everything. Because when you go to the book of the same, same um, book there, First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 1, it talks about that. That these were men, um, was helpers of uh, men, uh, help of uh, men of war. In the latter portion of chapter chapter twelve and verse one, 
in the book of Chronicles, it's talking about the mighty men and his helpers in war. Talking about David. These were the men of David here. Great men. That's why it's important to be able to have people that are advising you. Men, that, men and women of good counsel. Amen. People that's, that are walking with God, that knows God, that are talking with God by the grace of God. Whatever. Not just anybody. You don't want anybody in your ear when you need to make some decision. Especially when you're talking about war. You want people that's going to advise you and make sure that they're telling you the right thing, not telling what you what they think you want. Just like a few years ago, you probably heard me say it, and you, some of you remember for a while. This one lady in the church, she was a she supposed to be a prophet or whatever. She came in and done all the, doing all the things, whatever. And she knew that when you have when you have one child, it's a girl. So what's the next child you want to have? Huh? It's a boy. So she came in, she prophesied that, uh, that during that time, Lisa was going to be a boy. And so when Lisa was born, it just, she just went into tailspins. So who missed it? She was telling us what we wanted, what we wanted to hear, what she thought we wanted to hear. Was that from God? No, it was not from God, because God don't miss it. He always correct. And that's what I'm telling you now. You can listen to the wrong, just like the 12 and the 10, the 12 spies. You can listen to the two or you can listen to the 10. That's your choice. But whoever you listen to, you reap the same benefit they reap. They, they reap. The 10 did not go into the promised land. Nor did the people they were leaving, leading went into the promised land. But the two did. And that's why you can't get caught up on size, how big, how many, and all this stuff like this. You got to have knowledge about certain things, make good, wise decisions. And when you do, by the grace of God, you can't be moved by what you see. Because, see, the devil will always try to interfere with things that you have no control over. The battles you're fighting now, most of your battles that you're fighting right now are battles that you have no control over. Stuff you can't control, he's not going to mess with you. But he, if he knows that you're concerned about it, he's going to fight you tooth and nail. But that's why you got to be able to stand by the grace of God and be able to stand on the promises of God because you know for a fact God will never leave you nor will he forsake you. Being fully persuaded what he has promised, he was also able to perform. And not give up by the grace of God. And don't waver. And like, be like Abraham. Don't stagger. And don't waver because of what you see by the grace of God. And that's why in order for us to be successful and be successful in this life, that's why we need to have discernment and word of wisdom and revelation knowledge about what's going on so we can be successful. In the book of 1 King, 1 King chapter 3 and verse, verse 9, it said here in, in the classified version, he said, so give your servant, and under, this, is, this is Solomon here. Solomon just did not want just wisdom, but he also wanted revelation knowledge as well. Now, how can revelation knowledge? It can come through asking God for it. God can give it to you. We have, Book of James said what? We have not because we ask not. And when we, when we, God give us this word of wisdom and um, knowledge and whatever, we want to start using it by the grace of God. Making decision, approaching God when now decision making so we can continue to grow in this, in this area in our life. Don't just, whatever, whatever um, thought fly, come over your head, come to your head, whatever, you continue to start living by those thoughts. You want to start being a little bit more considerate, a little bit more concerned, be patient about the decision you make. Slow down and wait till the light change. Don't try to run at the light you get to, even though it's cautious. Because you're in Huntsville, you don't want to do that. Because people in Huntsville run red lights and think nothing of it. That's why you want to make sure that when you stand in that light, when that light turns green, don't, don't, don't hit that gas pedal and say, hey, I need to go. Hey. That may, it may be good to you. It may not be good for you. Because this other person is thinking about going too. They're trying to beat that light. And they got their yellow light. And guess what? It 
It could be a disaster. That's why you have to learn to listen to God. But Solomon himself was the smartest man there was. But guess what? Even him being smart, at some point, he made a bad decision by dealing with all them concubines. You know the story. Even though, regardless of how smart you are and the wisdom and the revelation knowledge that God revealed to you, you still have a choice. You still can make bad decisions. That was not on God. That was on who? That was on Solomon. Because God warned him. God told him, said, if you get involved with all these women, they're going to do what? They were going to turn your heart from me. He had a choice to make. Continue to use the wisdom that God gave him or to get into self and start doing his own thing. That's what he did. And the birth thing that God told him was going to happen, it happened because why? He did not listen and rely on the wisdom and understand that God had given him. It happens all the time. And people get upset with God. Well, God, why this happened to me? Why you did this to me? Why you let that happen to me? He's telling you what's going on, but many times that's not what we want to hear. If anything we don't want to hear, we're blocking our mind. Because we always want to hear things, uh, us for and no more, all the, the good stuff. But sometimes God sends us warnings sometimes, prepare for things to come. But that's not what we want to hear sometimes. We want to hear all the good stuff. But even when it even comes to bad stuff, that's not bad because what it does, it can prepare you for, but help you condition yourself when things do happen. You're not getting ready. You are ready by the grace of God. Amen? The book of, um, book of Daniel, book of Daniel. Daniel chapter, um, chapter 8 and verse um, 15 and 16. We're not going to look at um, 17, but chapter Daniel chapter 8, 15 and 16 and amplified version. Here was um, Daniel was trying to, was he was not trying, but by the grace of God, he was the king here, Belshazzar. He wanted an interpretation of his dream. But Daniel did not know the interpretation of it immediately. But what he did was, he said in verse, in verse 8, chapter 8 and verse 15 through 16, I sought to understand it. It says, so when, when I even, I, Daniel, have seen the vision, I what? I sought to understand it by the grace of God. And that's what you have to do. Sometimes you're going to come into a situation where you're not sure what you need to do. And especially when you're, when you're the type of person that people are always leaning upon you for advice. Okay? And people are going to come to you with some situations sometimes that you know what you should do, what needs to be done, but your question you have to ask yourself, if this is the right thing I should do here. That's why you need to concede. That's why you need to consult God about that situation. So to make sure you don't want to just tell them what you feel or what you think. You want to give them the right information by the grace of God. Amen. And if you do that, it's going to be a blessing to you. It's going to be a blessing to them. They may say, well, hey, I think I need to go on this trip. But the Holy Spirit is telling you, you don't need to go on this trip. But because you love them, you probably say, well, well, go ahead and just pray about it and just go on. But if the Holy Spirit is telling you is telling you to tell them not to go, it's your responsibility to be honest with them and say, look, now I'm going to tell you what the Lord is sharing with me. Now you can make your own decision and leave it with them and let them make the decision from there. At least they've been warned, okay? But don't agree with them when you know for a fact God has told you and shared, shared something with you to tell them and you just go ahead and just ignore what God told you and just agree with them. And then if something chaotic happened to them, then guess what? You, you feeling bad because you should have told them. And then guess what? Now they're hurt. Or they're in a situation where they could have been prevented. And how many times we've done this? We've told people what they wanted to hear, but deep down in our heart, that really was not what they needed. Because we don't want to really to be able to confuse them or cause chaos and confusion. Many times, being living for Christ is not always going to be peaceful to other people. You got to tell people the truth. Be open and honest with people by the grace of God. They may not want to hear it, 
but you got to tell them in a way. You don't need to do this. You don't need to go there. You don't need to be with him or you don't need to be with her or whatever. So I said, well, they, they'll figure it out. They may figure it out, but it, it, it could be a cost when they do figure it out. That's why you want to be able to tell them. You tell them, you do what God tells you to do, and let God take care of the rest. And when you do it, you don't do it in strife. Well, yeah, do what you want to do. No, you do it in love. I don't think you should do this because God is sharing this with me, and I just want to share it with you. And don't be a hater because they're getting ready to do something, and you don't want them to do it, and you tell them, say, I don't think you should do it. Make sure you're in the right spirit when you share with people what they should and should not do by the grace of God. If you do it in love, guess what? They receive it in love and be a blessing to them as well. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 22. And then verse 9 about the dream and everything that, that Chesed had. In verse 9 of Daniel chapter 22. He instructed me and made me understand. Not only did Daniel seek God for instruction, but God, God gave him what he needed. And because of that, that wasn't what Belshazzar, Belshazzar that, was, that was not what he wanted to hear. But guess what? That what God wanted him to know. And this is so important to us as believers. It's not always going to be good to you. But the truth is, it can help you if you listen to it by the grace of God. Then we're going down to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 3, verse, um, verse 5. The scripture quoted by a lot of people. Trust in the Lord, lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all the ways, and he should guide and direct your path. Boy, we get that scripture all the time. But many times, we're not trusting in God. We're doing our own thing. If that's what we want to do, that's what we're going to do. Just like Judas. A few weeks ago, we shared about Judas. Judas, had he did not have to... He did not, he was not forced really to deceive or to deny Jesus. He made his own decision to do that. Same thing with us. He don't make you do anything. But he leads and guides you and directs you. And you make your own choice. Remember I said earlier in the message, you have what? A free will and choices to make. And with those, you can decide what you want to do with them. You can go with God or you can walk away from God. That's your choice. And that's why it's important for us to, to understand what God has for us. Lean in trust and be confident in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. Again, some of us are smart. Some of us are very intelligent. Well, I'm going to just do it anyway and see what happens. You don't want to do that because the outcome could be so devastating to your point you, that it be hard to recover from it. depends on what it is. If you can't swim, don't jump in that pool 12 feet of water and no lifeguards around you. That could be devastating. You got faith you can swim across it, before you get to that point, you and baby swimming four feet first. Know that you can do it by the grace of God. You don't want to get to that assuming that God is going to deliver you. You need to know God is going to deliver you. And I'm not saying he can't deliver you. I'm not saying that at all. But you need to know that in your heart. You can't lean on your own understanding when it comes to that type of stuff or whatever. And the Holy Spirit will, will teach you and show you what you need to do. And he will not only show you what, you what to do, if you be willing to do it. And many times, it's not what we want to hear, but many times we don't want to do what God is telling us. And that's why we're fighting against principalities and whatever. All the stuff that's going on in the world, all the stuff that's going on. If many times, we would get better results if we listen to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit might be telling you before you can ask for forgiveness or whatever, you need to repent. Need to repent first. People think repentance is only for, for sinners. Repentance is for everybody. And when you do something wrong, you need to repent. Because the devil will do everything he can to really harass you about 
that situation. And you don't want to be harassed by him and make you feel like you have not been forgiven. If you confess with your mouth, 1 John 1, 9, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart, thou shalt be saved by the grace of God. We can confess. If we confess, he can, he can help us out. And then when he do that, it's important. That's why it's important is to repair yourself now. God has given the church an opportunity to repair ourselves right now, both physically as well as corporately, for things to come down the road. This is not time to take a sabbatical from the church and from God. Stop praying, stop reading, stop attending church and all of those stuff. This is not the time. This is preparation time right now for things that are going to take place that we're going to be dealing with coming up down the road. And you heard me say me again, I say it again. You can't get ready, you got to be ready. And you don't want to be caught by surprise. Nothing no worse than being caught by surprise on something. And that's why you're giving us opportunity now to learn it, to learn, to prepare ourselves so when things do take place, guess what? We may do it. Just like a boxer. A boxer can't wait until he get, get into the ring, into a ring to be ready for his opponent. He got to be ready for his opponent and be well trained before he get into the ring with his opponent. With, with, with his opponent. If he didn't run like he's supposed to run, then do the exercise and train and develop himself, whatever. Chances are, even though he's a good boxer, if the other guy is more, has, has done all the training and all the good stuff, most likely he will suffer defeat. Not because he's a bad guy, because why? He did not take advantage of the opportunity and train and develop himself for the fight. And this is what God is doing for the church. He is training us and developing us so we can be able to prepare ourselves when things come against us. When he said that we're more than a, more than a conqueror, he's not saying that just because it's a good idea. You can conquer if you do your part, if you learn to listen to him. Not just conquer something, but by the grace of God, you can conquer everything by the grace of God. that come in your way. that come to you. But guess what? A lot of people are not doing that because for, for a simple fact that you're like the boxing. They're not preparing themselves because things are going good. Things are, are going like Burger King. It's going their way right now. But it could change any time. God guarantees success. But guess what? It's up to us to do what God tells us to do so we can not only have success but maintain success. Look in the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Remember God told Joshua, he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written therein. Not some, but all. And as a result of that, what's going to happen if you do it? Remember God has his place, got his part, and you got your part. And look at the latter part in that verse. It says, for then you, shall, then you shall make your way, your way, prosper. Not God's way. Make your way prosperous. And then you should, you should deal wisely and have good success. There's a condition here. He's telling them what to do. And this is what God is telling us to do. In the decision we need to make, we need to make sure we have revelation knowledge and we're acting upon the right source, not based upon naysayers, what they say, what they're doing. What they're doing is what they're doing. And you got to let them do what they're doing. Remember the, the children, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo, they didn't argue with them. They said, I tell you what, you guys eat what you're going to eat and let us eat what God's telling us to eat. Then after 10 days, we'll go back and revisit this thing again and see the outcome. That's what you have to do. But many people are under pressure. Listen to me. Look at your neighbors are under pressure. Under pressure, they make some bad decisions based upon because they don't want, want other people to feel like they're outsider. They're not in agreement with them. Agree or not agree or disagree. If it's not God, I'm telling you, you don't want to do it. 
regardless of the pressure. And that's why it's important for us to be have revelation knowledge because, listen to me, you don't have to have some wins and some losses. Get that mentality at your head. You want to be all wins. And you can have all wins. Jesus didn't half die or partially die. He was all in all the way. And that's what we got to be. We can't be half in and half out. We either in or we're out. If you're going to be in, get in and stay in and go all the way. So you can experience what in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse, verse 14, where God always causes us to triumph, to be successful by the grace of God. Not sometime, but all the time. But if you if you walk around thinking, say, well, I've got to win some, lose some, guess what? That's not where you want to be. People may not agree with, that's fine. But I'm telling you, I want to be, I'm a winner by the grace of God, not a loser. Because of his success, because of what he was able to obtain, he passed it on to me. I am able to obtain the same thing by the grace of God. And if I use the wisdom of God and do what he tell me to do, I will be successful. Not that I may be successful, I could be successful, I wish I ought to be successful. I will be successful by the grace of God, regardless of what they say, regardless of what they see, regardless of what they think, regardless of how much they talk about it. Does not stop God. Amen. If God told you to do it, it's going to work. Even like Abraham, guess when A and Sarah, 90 some, some her being 90, being 100 years old, just about by the grace of God, God told me he was going to be blessed with a son. Even though it took 25 years, did it happen? Yes, it did. And God would do you the same way if you listen to him and get his understanding. And by the grace of God, things can change for you by the grace of God. Five points here. The things that, how can you obtain this revelation of? Number one, we can pray for it. We can pray for it. Just like Solomon did. Revelation of God. God, give me knowledge. And help me to stop making bad decisions. God, I want to hit the nail on the head every time. I want to, I want to know that not only the strategy, but I want to know the timing and the opportunity for me to do things by the grace of God. That's so important. So important. Number, number two, reading his word. Just like he told, told Joshua, read God's word. And when you read his word, not just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. A lot of people hear it. A lot of people read it, but they're not doing. They're not doing what they hear, and they're not applying what they're reading. Not just to hear the word. They go to church every Sunday, every church, every time the church door opens, they're right there. But their life never changed. Their lifestyle never changed. It's almost like standing in the shower with a with a raincoat on. You're laving yourself down with soap with the raincoat on. And, what, and you wonder why the smell is not going away. Pull the raincoat off. Let it soak. Let it get to the place it needs to be. Let the word of God get in you where it needs to be, in your heart, so you can make the change that needs to be changed. And number three, listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit now. So when you get into big situations, great situations where it requires um, some major decision, and won't you not be a stranger in making decisions or whatever? You know what you need to do. Just like the sons of Issachar, they knew what to do when the time for them to do it. They had a strategy. They had the opportunity to present itself, and they knew the timing and when to do it. And and you can, and God is no respect for just like He did it for them. He can also do it for you. Now, only listen to the Holy Spirit. Obey the Holy Spirit. This is one of the things God will tell us what to do, show us what we need to do, and when we need to do it. But still, we want to do our own thing. And then when things don't work out, we're walking around with an egg on our face and we're upset with God because it didn't happen. No, it didn't happen because you did not listen to what God told you to do and you did not obey what God told you to do. 
Because he's not going to be, he's not going to beat you out of bed. He's not going to force you out of bed. He's not going to be like in boot camp, turn your bed upside down, force you out of bed. He's not going to do that. He's going to leave. He's going to give it to you. He's going to leave the choice and decision up to you. If you want it, here it is. Just like preparing a dinner. I've, I've labeled, I work, I prepared it for you, I placed it on the table for you. Now it's up to you to eat it. If you want to starve yourself, set it up at the table and starve yourself, that's entirely up to you. This is what God does. He makes it, He places things in such a way so, guess what? We can't miss it by the grace of God. And just like Daniel in the, in the fifth one, God will give you revelation knowledge if you ask him. Just like he did Daniel. Daniel asked for, he was in a situation where he needed to make sure he did not miss it when it comes to the king. Man, what, a, what an important position to be in. Here you are being brought before the king saying that you can interpret dreams. You can't go over there talking about I don't know, I, I, I think. This is the king. Man, you could, be, <laughs> you could be killed for this. You need to know. And because he sought God and God gave him an answer and whatever, and that was able to really to tell the king what he needed to hear. We don't have to miss it, brother and sister. If you want to live a successful life by the grace of God, you want to start living and acting on revelation knowledge. Amen. So don't, don't look at what they're doing. I remember years ago when I was in the military, they always saying, man, I don't want to be a lifer. Man, forget this man's army and all the little crazy stuff. All the negative stuff or whatever. But you got to decide in life what you want. You can't base what you want based upon what other people want. Just like in running. We can start off the together but that don't mean we're going to end together. It's important to know that. Revelation knowledge. Any decision you're making, moving forward, going forward, you want to ask God, say, God, should I, should I not do this? Especially if you're confused about it. Show me what I should do. And if you do it, I'll do it, what you tell me to do. And I guarantee if you do it, you're going to be blessed. Amen? Let church say amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you so much for your word today. And we praise you, God, how to be successful when it comes to fighting life battles. Father, there are many battles out there to fight. We fight them every day. And Father, we don't want just fight to just be fighting, but we want to be like the sons of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, Father. We want to have a strategy. We want to seek the, know the, seek the opportunity. And Father, we want to be able to do things in a timely manner. In Jesus' name, we thank you for what you're doing, and we bless you for what you've already done, Father. And we just give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.